Hey guys, it's your boy Eli from the Centurions, and we're back for another great episode. And right now it's just me and my brother, because, um, you know, school is still a thing for most of the guys in this podcast. From Kelvin all the way to Daniel, David, even the new guy who we saw the other day, last time, Gus. Lovely guy, I love him so much. And now, so, we're, so it's just me and Joey, because we're the only ones that are actually done with school. Yeah, and uh, we are also the only ones that are... Uh... Uh, I, I think have the time to do anything, it's, you know, especially during you know this whole uh, quarantine, quarantine kind quarant- of thing. Yeah, quarantine. Kind so of thing. yeah, we're uh, so we're just gonna be here talking about something that you know I've always wanted to talk to Joey about, especially since he's basically kind of like the film nerd of the of the crew. Yeah, um, <laughs> film nerd is a bit of an exaggeration. I took film classes so i i know about film but uh i'm not necessarily i wouldn't call myself an aficionado of the Mm. of the uh you're not a connoisseur yeah i'm not really a connoisseur of uh various random russian uh foreign films i had to see clips of in class to which i was just all right well this is the thing I mean, I know about French New Wave. I know that's a thing. So, yeah. I think I remember you even telling me that French New Wave was weird. It's very weird. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I guess it's less weird and more just like it's supposed to like be just about real life. And sometimes it just gets really boring. I remember. Uh, well, anyways, we'll not, we'll, we won't get into that. No, no, no. This is, uh, you know, we're a pop culture, geek culture kind of stuff. So... What I so I came up we came up with this idea since it was just gonna be you and me and it's been a while since it's been you and me and since you studied film I wanted to ask you about um, something that I've learned when I took a, a film class which was genre films and genre films um, they're basically kind of it's easy to, I guess it would be easy to say like you know your sci-fi movies your western movies but there's kind of a more to it. And I don't know, I'll let you explain that. Well, yeah, I, from what I can tell, uh, genre films are, you know, you know, they're films based on that, you know, that fall under a very sort of, like, specific genre. You got your noir films, and you got your musical films. You, pretty much they all have, like, this sort of set standard uh, ideal that they want to strive towards. They mm-hmm. have, like, various tropes that they call upon, various sort of you know it like they have a set, they feel like they have a set formula in terms of like the uh what they are like you will know when you see a musical movie like oh this is a musical oh this is a sci-fi movie oh this is a horror film movie so you know it's it, that's usually just what like genres are sort of just seen in terms of like uh the film making space so yeah and when you and I were talking, you said that it's kind of like, not a science, but there's kind of like a roadmap to every genre film. Yeah, it's kind of like a weird uh, cycle. Uh, like, not necessarily, it, it, it's not necessarily, it's more like a cultural cycle that you, you kind of see. And we're a pop culture kind of podcast, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like something, like a trend that's just happens to be seen in a good... In a lot of uh, genre films, it, it has, it's sort of broad enough to where it can really apply to like a lot of things, but mm-hmm. it, it it mainly just focuses on like genre films. And uh, I don't necessarily know the correct terminology. I just sort of call it as the genre cycle. Uh, it and uh, it's sort of a well, yeah, it's a cycle it, basically. From what it's it, it's in four stages. You start off with, uh, I believe, primitive is the first sort of stage of this cycle that I remember learning from film class, where it's sort of, uh, it's the beginning, you know? It's sort of like, these are the films that essentially establish the status quo for later, more popular films that define the genre. You so, know? What would be an example for that? It could be any kind of genre that you can think of. Um, I would maybe say, um, I could. I don't know. Uh, it's. I want to say that maybe something like um. The jazz singer, which is like a really old, like nineteen thirties film. It was the first film 
that actually had sound and it was uh and they mainly utilized it for music so i in in a weird way you could see it as sort of a a precursor to the musical uh genre as Mm -hmm. it it used music as its primary like that was like sort of the, the the main focus like it was based on musicians uh, musician and there was a lot of song there so yeah you could just sort of see that as sort of the beginning of a uh, of uh you know the musical genre and sort of setting the the sort of the tropes that would come in later iterations and then after so so this primitive and then after that is classical which is basically the the quintessential it's mm-hmm. like this is what you think of when you think of this genre of film mm-hmm and uh, I guess an example of that would be, I guess, for like like film noir, you would say Double Indemnity or uh, The Maltese Falcon. <laughs> for uh, horror, you might go with uh, Night of the Living Dead. Really? I... I I would, well, that may be like the original uh, Universal Monster movies mm-hmm. as well. Um, I'm trying to think. Sci-fi is kind of hard just because, like, I feel like sci-fi is kind of, like, very broad. Um, Wouldn't you say Star Wars would probably be the, the big one? Or more like um, that's different level entirely of itself? I think you could argue that, yeah. Okay. So Star Wars would probably be, like, definitely, like, defining of the sci-fi genre like that. Mm. Um, I guess for musicals, you would think sound of, uh, the sound of music... Mm. Uh, Grease, maybe West Side Story, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, but yeah, after that comes sort of the. Uh, I, I, I I would want to say that it, it, critique mm-hmm. is probably the correct is probably the word. I think there's like other ways you can call yeah. it, but uh, yeah, but it's basically the sort of uh, point in sort of a genre cycle where films start to sort of like break down the conventions Mm -hmm. of the genre like do something different with it Mm -hmm. like you have the trendsetters you have you know the big ones and now you sort of start seeing these films that sort of break away from those trends uh and sort of like try to do their own thing with it Mm -hmm. by while still sticking to a lot of the uh, tropes and various things that make these genre films what they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a, a very good example of that would be uh, the Fistful of Dollars trilogy. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, the Man with No Name stuff like that. The Clint Eastwood movies. Yeah, those Clint Eastwood movies that are sort of like very uh, m- much more grittier than like the classical western, which is like the good guy with a gun. Sort some, of thing, some John Wayne kind of thing. Yeah, some John Wayne, nice open like uh, shots of like Arizona and all that, like Mon- mm-hmm. Monument Valley stuff. And here it's more like it's more gritty. It's more like realistic to the, like the time. Sort of like this is this is not a glorified version of the Wild West. This is what probably it was. There, there weren't heroes. Rarely were there heroes. Yes. Um, but yeah, and then after that is sort of the uh, parody, mm-hmm. paradox, critical, or whatever they would like to call it. That's more fancy. It's just parody. That's the last sort of stage, and it's basically what it is. It sort of like makes fun of like mm-hmm. the, the the tropes of the genre while still trying to stay true to that genre to an extent. Mm-hmm. I think a uh, pretty easy example of this is like basically all those like parody movies that came out in the early 2000s you know scary movie mm-hmm. stuff like that a lot of the mel brooks films definitely a lot of the mel brooks films blazing saddles is definitely like like that big one because mm-hmm. it was basically it it literally like did a lot of stuff to uh the western and just made fun of a lot of stuff about it mm-hmm. um space balls <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Space Walls too. It, it, that, that also would count as sort of like that. And yeah, those are sort of like uh, examples and uh, of like this whole cycle. Now, granted, it does sort of like that is sort of this uh, the cycle. Now, mm-hmm. now, now basically, I'll, I'll, I'm, uh, this isn't sort of like a tried, tested, 
thing. It's more like it's just sort of like putting a name to like a trend that people have seen in mm-hmm. in various in pop culture, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's sort of just like a cre yeah. It, it's sort of just like it's not sort of definitive, you know. Obviously, like you can see the cycle in like a lot of film genres, but just because just you've essentially reached the point of parody in a film genre in that it cycle, mean it's the end. it does not mean it's the end. It's sort of like we're now in this stage where a lot of people who want to make films in this genre like to do it like this. Mm-hmm. You can still pull out like, you know, a film that sort of like would fit more in the, the vein of say, uh, the classical or the the, the critique kind of thing. Mm. I, I think one one example that I think would would illustrate that well is uh the the remake of the Magnificent Seven that came out a couple of years ago with Chris Pratt and uh, Denzel Washington. Yeah, like I feel like that seems more like kind of a bit of like a critique mm-hmm. kind of version because the original Magnificent Seven definitely feels a lot like a... Well, first of all, it was sort of an adaptation of Seven Samurai. Mm-hmm. There's that a whole... You know, we'll, we'll leave that to its own thing. <laughs> and Magnificent Seven yeah. sort of, like, comes off as sort of, like, a classic... You know, a classical example of, like, a Western genre film. The original or the new one? The the original. The new one seems more like a critique of that mm-hmm. kind of thing, mainly just through the fact that it adds a lot more uh, characters of color... Mm-hmm. Considering that you know, like there were definitely all uh, you know, not not all cowboys were white dudes. Mm-hmm. You definitely got some black guys, some Hispanics, you know, and you know, just sort of like it, it's definitely a lot, sort of I guess darker, mm-hmm. at least a little bit, to the original to an extent. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's sort of like it, and it gives like uh, I think the one female like a prominent role to a certain extent. Yeah, I felt like that role was a little... Even for me, it was a little forced. Yeah, but that's sort of, like, I think the idea... Uh, what they wanted of the critique. To, of the critique, giving, like, like the one, like, main female more of a role in mm. sort of the uh, story, which is sort of a trend that, you know, you see in a lot of times now in modern filmmaking. Mm-hmm. So it would only make sense to, like, And not to mention, that. if you consider, like competitor like re- realistically a lot of the women too were also very um not gun ho but you know they they could stand on their own yeah yeah they yeah. have to you know survive out in the out in the midwest yeah i guess you could also like i guess to a further extent bring in red dead redemption like those yeah. games <laughs> although I, I yeah 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 so i, I although i won't like because you know that's just jumping into a different <laughs> uh type of like entertainment entirely yeah and this genre cycle mainly just focuses on film. And although it, I feel like it could definitely be applied to other things like video games and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, those are like sort of the four like major like sort of cycles. Yeah. Uh, like, like even just talking about this, I was thinking of like other examples like this, like the slasher films. Like um, Halloween was the precursor to a lot of the slasher films and like. Friday the Thirteenth. I mean, it's probably the easy good example I think anyone can make yeah. because the because you there was a, such a skyrocket of those films. Like I said, Halloween. Then you got Friday the Thirteenth, which basically set the standard for a lot of them. You yes. Know, the tropes, like you said the, earlier, the tropes, the whole you know how you can't have sex, so you smoke, uh, do drugs, or anything that you're instantly dead. You got the the and especially since um, <clears throat> Halloween set up the whole uh, final girl purity virgin thing which is weird on itself yeah <laughs> they yeah no so essentially like you know that's in the trend that's why every time a majority of the time in like slasher films you there's always the last girl because that is the one that always survives um who was the girl jamie lee curtis was, was the last one in the halloween so yeah that became, she's the prime example of the finer girl and now you have that and then at some point we ended up getting i don't know if we ever had the parody for um slasher films though I would say something like Leprechaun. Remember that the Leprechaun movies? Oh um, maybe uh, you know, because that sort of follows the conventions of a slasher film, mm-hmm. except you know it's 
just a leprechaun trying to kill you instead. Right, because later on they would try to add more of a mystical element, especially with um, Friday the 13th with like Jason, Jason's Back from Hell or whatever what that one was called. I'm, I'm blanking on that one. At some point I just kind of stopped watching Friday the 13th movies and just try to watch other more interesting horror movies. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and then um, but wouldn't you consider um, Scream to be the, the ultimate critique of slash films then? I don't know. Possibly, although yeah. a part of me wants to maybe say it could lean on parody, although a uh, scary movie probably takes that parody slot definitely well. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, Scream and like all its subsequent sequels definitely do like do sort of like question a lot of the slasher tropes. Uh, sorry, and uh, a lot of the other like sort of horror tropes as well. Mm-hmm. So in theory, yes, I could definitely see it being sort of like a critique. Mm-hmm. So like I know when I was taking the class, this film class about talking about you know, and we ended up talking about genre films. We ended up talking that at you know there's this peak level where you would see the certain genre every year, and at some point it just kind of like dies down. Um, the one I can think of off the top of my head is um, the musicals, because that that went in fast, that came in ha- fast and hard, and left like a dying carcass in the road. I guess a little bleak, but you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sort of like a uh, oversaturation kind of effect. Yeah, and oftentimes, do you does, is that one of the things that people look to when in, they ever look at this sort of genre cycle? kind of yeah i would say that it, it's more of like like i said i think it's more of sort of like just sort of like noticing that these are that that, that this is a trend that happens to a lot of genre mm-hmm. films that's sort of like you know a lot of them sort of go through these cycles of like you wanting to like be in, in, i think in, in a way as an effort to uh mm-hmm. uh balance itself out to be like different Mm-hmm. to like innovate and uh like uh give the audience something new to watch something mm-hmm. that's like that's within obviously the same genre but not uh not the same thing they've seen before mm-hmm. something new and different yeah yeah that's why i feel like this is sort of uh what it, what what a lot of people sort of look at when they look at this sort of cycle in genre mm-hmm. films Got it. Because the, the, now we're going into the big question and probably the thing that's going to take over a majority of this uh, conversation for this podcast is that superhero movies are now the new big genre of the film. We're probably going to go over, quickly we'll go over how each, where, where each, where the comic book movies are in this cycle and will we see um, the eventual decline like the musicals and the westerns did. Because westerns also went through that decline too. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm pretty like... In all honesty, westerns were basically the original superhero movies. Uh, oh yeah, before, no. firstly for an American audience, uh, because they, you know, they they sort of uh, had a glorification of the old, uh, you know, the old Wild West. You know, the good cowboy, the Lone Ranger, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, it, it like it reached such a big like boom period where like the big movies were always westerns hmm. but then it eventually sort of declined and you definitely got a lot of those sort of uh critiques mm-hmm. of like those you know tropes and stuff and eventually you, you sort of got like parodies like uh, blazing saddles that sort of just poke holes at like you, uh, sort of like man the wild west was not as fun as you think it is no it's very racist <laughs> <laughs> well not only that but also you know just like a lot of bad things happened in the Wild West. Oh yeah, no. If, look up Henry History Book during that whole period. Manifest Destiny does a lot of things to people. It does a lot of things, and so, but you know, usually those films kind of have a comeback, real kind of, not a, not in a hard way, but they do come back. You know, there was the whole True Grit. Um, yeah. The last two, well, before uh, Once Upon a Time in in uh, Hollywood. Quentin Tarantino's the the other two films, uh, uh, Ma- uh Hateful Eight and J- well, Django was more of a more had had, had, had Western elements. Yeah, it, it was definitely a lot like a, sort of a mix between black exploitation and 
Western. But mm-hmm. anyways, yeah, yeah, like, the, 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 yeah, sort of like you know, westerns do sort of come back. You know, in mm-hmm. like, that's what happens with a lot of genres. They sort of like musicals like, came back too. Yeah, where they start doing more of um more of actual musicals. We just had Cats. Yeah, I mean, we've had Les Mis, which was pretty big, if I remember. Yeah, Moulin uh, Rouge was one. Yeah, so, you know... Um, these, these, what was that one with... Um, had Ferris Bueller? The, uh, Matthew Broderick. Uh, Matt, the, yeah, Matthew Broderick. Uh, producers. The producers, yeah, yeah, yeah which was a big one. Yeah. And I think... And they're doing two new ones with um, the ones made by Lin-Manuel, Lin-Manuel Miranda. But, right. you know, let's let's get to the big point, which is the superhero movies. So you're, you're the first one in the cycle you talked about was the um, the primitive, the, sort uh, of the archi- sort of like I guess in a way, sort of the the the, the, the films that, that sort of help create the tropes mm-hmm. and the various uh, you know conventions of the genre. Yeah. Yeah. So where would you what would you consider to be those as the primitives for the superhero film? Yeah. Um, I would say, um, it can be argued that, personally for me, I, I would say, like, the old serial films mm. of, uh, superhero films back in the, uh, 40s and 50s, not Batman, Tim Burns Batman, not Christopher Reeves Superman, I feel like those are more, because superhero films, at least superheroes on, like, in like you know TV media and stuff or in, and, and movies and stuff have been around they have been adapted mm-hmm. just that again they weren't necessarily like you couldn't necessarily capture uh, sort of the I guess super heroics yeah the super heroics back in the day due to the sort of limited technology they, they certainly tried especially with that original like uh, 1950 Superman serial show yeah or whatever um, but yeah, it's sort of a, I, I would consider that sort of the primitive or like the, the archetypal of, uh, the origins mm-hmm. of the superhero film genre. So what would you consider like the, cause the, the weird thing about comic book movies, you know, they have a source material. Yeah. Most of, maybe even just the musicals, well, more of the musicals, they, they get people who worked on musicals to be on it, but yeah. You know, for comic book movies, they have a source material that they can like latch off of. Yeah. And as I recall, the most of the heroes didn't really follow any of those. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. First, in this, in the, in that sort of era of uh, serial films, uh, yeah, they didn't really, uh, you know, like follow that much on sort of the. Yeah, you know, storylines of super uh, of the comics mainly. I think mainly because uh, they were sort of just like we just want to use the character and let them do whatever we want them to do. Yeah, and the serials were less than an hour, as I recall. Yeah, they were usually super short. So in the end, they so they still were able to like I guess uh, lay out what you would sort of see in you know future superhero films uh, and ones uh, and modern ones today. Mm-hmm. So that's pro- so you know you, as I recall the most of the ones you said were su- like Super Superman. I know there was a Shazam one, and I know there was a Captain America one, and I know there yeah, was a yeah yeah. I know I know there was um, Batman too. Yeah. And I remember watching them. None of them followed correctly. I don't think Cap was called Steve Rogers. I think he was called something else. And he was, I don't think he had the Super Super Soldier Serum in him. He was just a buff guy. He was just uh, his tr- his true power was just being American. Fair enough. <laughs> No, but um, I mean, you know, there wasn't that much in the beginning for them, but you know, then you get the what was it, what was the second one again? The classical. The classical, and where what would you consider to be these classical superhero movies? Um, I would say the like Superman, uh, Christopher Reeves. Christopher Reeves Superman, the the, I think would be the, I guess the. Archi- you know, the example of a classical superhero film. Mm-hmm. I f- it's sort of like mainly because one, it it was like the big one. Mm-hmm. It was the one that essentially helped push the genre 
and that you can oh, believe a man can fly. Yeah, exactly. You know, that was the whole tagline, and uh, you know, it was there to push all the other superhero films we have, you know, to this day. And I think uh, it definitely sort of like has it has a charm to it. Yeah, it definitely has a charm to it, and I, and I think that's sort of like what helps it, I guess, permeate to like the modern day in a way. Yeah, because like whenever you know, whenever you look at um the the original Christopher Reeve Superman, there's just some sort of like warmth and a lot of heart to it, which is when which is what you expect when you see Superman. You need a lot of warmth and heart, and they would later. It's funny enough they would later like incorporate a lot of the stuff that in, from the movies into the like the comics too. Like yeah. the whole um, I don't know, actually I can't I can't I was a can't I can't remind you right now, but I know that's one of the things that I remember people talking about a lot. But you know, Superman was you say Superman was one of the was one of the one of those. Is there any other ones you can think of at the top of your head? I would say maybe uh Batman as well. Batman? Okay. Yeah, Tim Burton's Batman would also I think be uh a good example of like say a classical superhero film. Mm-hmm. Man, it, and it's interesting cuz you know, both those films are like in a way like their tones are kind of like very different. Mm-hmm. But they still exhibit I think a lot of the basic tropes and genre conventions to you know be the status quo like this is what you this is what a superhero film is when you think about it Mm -hmm. like it has all of these things you know that like make it a definitive superhero film yeah because like you know we're talking about the warmth and like the heart and Superman film, the I would even consider Sam Raimi's Spider Man in there too, because there's there's such a. They're both kind of the same. There's a lot of like warmth and like, like not to sound like weird, but like you know it's a lot of you know. It's not dark and bleak. Rather, it's coming. If you read a Superman comic or a Spider Man comic, this is how you kind of would imagine it to be. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's very cheesy too, and especially because if you consider. The times, and especially, you know, Sam Raimi grew up with a more cheesier Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, it yeah. kind of makes sense that he would get cut, give us that. Yeah, I would definitely agree with uh, Spider-Man being considered sort of a classical uh, example. And so, yeah, it's, it's... And I think it's sort of like the kind of interesting thing about the superhero genre mm-hmm. is that I think it, more than other, other genres, experienced, like, weird... Uh, ups and downs mm-hmm. way early in its sort of genre life cycle because mm-hmm. Superman had like three sequels that were, I think maybe the second one was at least the best uh, out of those three sequels you know you had Superman then it was like what was the third Superman movie it was just Superman 3 and then Superman 4 The Quest for Peace which is your favorite one uh, only because of the title and that's about it <laughs> <laughs> Radio at a nuclear man with his uh, crazy fingernail attack. <laughs> he scratches you. He scratches you. Yeah, and then to a certain extent, I mean, and you know, uh, then there's a little bit of a lull, you know? You have, like, say, I, I guess Supergirl, but no one really cares about the original Supergirl movie. There was a movie? <laughs> I don't know, you thought it was some other TV show? Then again, I forget both of them. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I feel like at least the TV show is a lot better. It's, it's at least watchable, but then when you had that one episode where, like, I stand with Supergirl, I am Supergirl, the very, um... Uh, the I am Spartacus moment? Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> All right. no, no, this wasn't, no. Yeah. I only watched it for the crossover flash, you know, no. No, but you, you were saying... Yeah, yeah, so, you know, I feel like that, more than others, it had its own, like, ups and downs. Yeah. Even with, you know, Tim Burton's Batman, you got Batman uh, Returns, which is, you know pretty all right in my book yeah it's pretty all right in my book and then you get uh the schumacher the schumacher films which sort of like for a lot of people they sort of like say it's the it's it's those films were the one like batman and robin was the one to kill the superhero genre in the early 90s or whatever Mm -hmm. and not to mention um i feel there was also like the 90s um captain america movie yeah yeah yeah, i remember that you had blade which is one of the most well-known marvel films Later on, with no with the sequel that was a lot better, but then three just kind of ruined it. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's definitely uh, spawn too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the superhero genre definitely had it has a bit of a weird life cycle. Mm-hmm. But at, now that we've talked about, I think examples of sort of uh, I guess the classical. Mm-hmm. 
uh, it is sort of interesting to try to talk about, um, like, I guess, film, superhero films that we would consider, like, critiques of the mm-hmm. genre. Yeah, because we're, we're still, comic book films are weird. They're, like I said, like you said they're, they have a lot of ups and downs, but they don't fit anywhere in this, this genre cycle that you talked about and it's not because they don't adhere to it but it's more like we're in the renaissance right now yeah uh yeah like when i yeah i think when i meant uh you know like it has a weird cycle or it's a weird life cycle Mm -hmm. compared to like a sort of genre cycle like we've reached like superhero boom like westerns had like i think a sort of like that like linear rise mm-hmm. before like a plateau and eventual fall mm-hmm. with occasional like rises once you know, every now and again with like different kinds of western films mm-hmm. superhero films i think were sort of like like it sort of like goes in like a weird like wave i think mm-hmm. you have like superman comes out it's huge and then it comes down and then batman comes out and it's huge and then it comes down now who well, you know? Ever since stuff like The Dark Knight, Iron Man, MCU stuff, you, you sort of like that, that sort of slow mm-hmm. rise. He's like we've now reached that sort of point of like the boom period, mm-hmm. which is not necessarily like a. Uh, it's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing, but it's not necessarily a. a uh, like it, it, it's not sort of like a thing that's talked about in this sort of genre cycle. It's more like the genre cycle is more of a you know just looking at trends that happen within mm-hmm. a genre yeah because like like i even remembering the lead up to say the first avengers film or um the dark knight returns or the dark knight i'm sorry there there wasn't much like interest in it until it hit i mean i i definitely think there was definitely a lot of buzz but there was i think a lot of people that were skeptical that mm-hmm. was sort of like this can go either really well or really bad but then you know avengers Proved everybody, like, you know, it was a, uh, it was a hit. It, it, people really liked it, and it sort of like shot a, you know, it made a ton of money, and then you know, everybody's realized like, holy shit, these superhero films can make a lot of money. And we had film superhero movies in between, say, Spider Man and the Avengers, which were like the, the big hitters. Because remember, there was um, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which was never, which we'll never talk about. And it's, it was originally a comic book written by Alan Moore that is well known for butchering the source material. But at the same time, we also had two other Alan Moore uh, books that were adapted to film, Watchmen, by Zach, with Zack Snyder directing, which was too, you know, close to the source material, <clears throat> despite, it, despite changing some stuff. And then you have V for Vendetta, which is probably the best one out of those adaptations of his. Yeah, and that's sort of the interesting thing. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to like looking at superhero genre, uh, this you know this genre, the superhero genre in mm-hmm. terms of film, like once we get to like, it definitely feels like we're still like in sort of a classical kind of uh, like mm-hmm. s- like s- part of the cycle. But I I feel like there's definitely have been moments of uh, you know critiques or, or, or like, yeah of of the genre. I think. For for some people that would be the Dark Knight mm-hmm. in a way, because it's so grounded and realistic compared to what mm-hmm. people usually think of superhero films being fantastical and larger than life. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, for me, I think um, that film would be sort. If you were to think of a film, a superhero film that would fit under the role of critique i think logan makes a pretty damn uh good example of that mm-hmm. yeah no I, I was thinking logan and joker joker as well i think joker definitely uh does uh, does it but i think uh, i think uh logan like does it like like way more like you can definitely see the cre- like the you know like the film looking at superhero the superhero genre at, oh, at okay. itself because it's I'm, I'm thinking. I'm guessing you're talking about the scene where he's talking about the comic book. Yeah, where where Logan ta- like is like where uh, X23, you know, Laura Kenny. Yeah, Laura is uh, looking 
at like those like X-Men comics and Wolver- Logan just like that's all bullshit all right <laughs> That's not how it happened. Yeah, not that like that's all like yeah. So, in a way, I feel like it's sort of like the filmmakers and in, in the film sort of saying, looking at like the current slate mm-hmm. of like a lot of the superhero films and sort of like showing itself as sort of like this interesting uh, way of like you know this is what happens when your superheroes get old you know kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah, and it's very much like a western too. They even showed like a one of one western movie that um, kind of it kind of has a similar beat to it in terms of like the 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 adult and the child situation. Yeah, yeah, I I don't exactly remember the name of it, but it, yeah, I definitely know what you're talking about. Yeah, because like that's and that's sort of the thing that I really liked about Logan. It's sort of and I think you're right. I think it is the when you think of the critique film of sort of movies that is the one because. If you hadn't watched all these previous X Men movies with that same character, where he's done some fantastical stuff, time travel, you know, save the world kind of stuff, he's he saved the world from destruction so many times, and now he's just a bitter old man. Yeah, where he just he's just looking for a reason to die. <laughs> Yeah. Which is, in itself, is the big tragedy of the movie. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But still sort of looking for that new hope, I guess, in, in Laura, the new, the next generation. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, you know, that's... Ugh, I feel like I can talk about that movie all day. Yeah, yeah, it is, it, it's definitely a really good movie. It's great. Now, when it comes to, say, the parody, I think you and I both know... Uh, like the the perfect example of that most likely Deadpool yeah Deadpool like mm. especially I think Deadpool 1 more so than probably Deadpool 2 mm. what about superhero movie mm, but, you know I, I would I, I guess yeah it's a bit it's a little too, it, it, it doesn't comment on modern ones right yeah in a way it, 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 it it's it's like a weird time capsule of like it's comment it's commenting on the superhero Ooh. films of the early two thousand, early and late two thousands, mm-hmm. before the big MCU boom, but uh, Deadpool, I think, definitely comments on the superhero boom now, mm-hmm. which I think, I think warrants it more than uh, the superhero, the superhero movie or whatever. It was. Yeah, I mean, he, aside from like the obvious nods he makes, like he's doing, she's doing a superhero landing. Oh, yeah, man, yeah, that's yeah. That's his yeah. bat on her knees. Yeah, but, but besides that, it, you know, like. Deadpool himself doesn't, yeah. It's just like it's a very uh, weird comedy. It's doesn't it doesn't take itself seriously. It definitely does make fun of a lot of the superhero tropes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it definitely does fall within that sort of uh, parody Mm -hmm. segment. Um, Trying to think of another film that possibly could fit under there, although. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard not to because I think you said yourself those are the ones that set the standard, like aside from like maybe like some less noteworthy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like there's been TV shows that parody superhero. There's been all this other stuff. Um, I know some people consider like One Punch Man. You know, despite it being an anime, it's kind of a parody on the superhero stuff. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see that sort of uh, being it. Because uh, comedy, I think, is the strongest point in that show. Sort of just mm-hmm. making fun of like a lot of those tropes. But I think it also just leans more into like tro- uh, making fun of sh- like shonen tropes as well as superhero stuff. So mm-hmm. it's sort of like an amalgamation of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, no, like for me, the interesting thing talking about like at least looking at the superhero genre within the lens of this cycle. Mm-hmm. Is that when you think about it, like, we are kind of in that, still in that classical stage of the cycle, Mm -hmm. but we are starting to see, like, you know, movies that sort of critique Mm -hmm. the current boom, movies that sort of parody the superhero genre as a whole. And I think that sort of provides the sort of, I think, the uh, main point of, like, sort of, I think, looking at superhero, the superhero films within this sort of lens of a genre cycle is that. The cycle isn't like there isn't a moment where like oh this is when the new cycle begins, mm-hmm. you know it's like oh this is when we finally transition. There isn't like a fixed point. Mm-hmm. It sort of just happens over time. Now, do you think 
there were slow that will eventually get to a decline. Like I know a lot of people say like you know once Endgame ends, you know that's that's it for superhero movies. It's over. You know the big narrative is done. You know there's what else can they do? Everything's gonna go downhill. Kind of stuff. But I don't know. What are your thoughts uh, before I say my thoughts? Um, for me, I think we are still very, very in that sort of uh, boom, I think. Because mm-hmm. there are very few films, superhero films nowadays, that don't bomb. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess that uh, what I mean is like there are very few superhero films that do bomb. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess, in a way, Birds of Prey slash Harley Quinn, whatever they want to call it, kind of sort of didn't do as well as be- as Warner Brothers wanted it to do. Mm-hmm. Which I think is like probably the most recent example. But like beyond that, like I think um Dark Phoenix. Yeah, Dark Phoenix as well, but that's sort of like a weird like studio kind of But you knew that was gonna happen. Yeah, it's sort of just like a weird sort of thing. Mm. Like those are the two big examples mm-hmm. I think personally that sort of just show that like uh, that 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 are like sort of like I guess like the superhero film isn't a guarantee, mm-hmm. but at the same time you get something like Joker, which I think some people you know it's sort of like, is this gonna work? Is this artsy sort of like take on a Batman villain actually gonna like make people get butts in seats? And you know it made like a billion dollars worldwide, mm-hmm. so you know it's sort of like. The fact that we're still, uh, that I'm that we might start seeing a say a trend of like superhero f- superhero films that sort of start critiquing the the status quo, mm. the the norm, and see them do successful, um, to me I feel like just shows that like, um, the superhero film is much more adaptable, much more malleable than like say other sort of film genres, mm-hmm. and could have the ability to at least last for a couple more years i mean personally i think uh, you know it's it's kind of easy to sort of like make a superhero film like different enough but still have it be sort of status quo like winter soldier i think i remember I, and a lot of people sort of call it like a weird spy film as well as a superhero film mm-hmm. or um uh, like we said like you said earlier logan being sort of like like very heavily like inspired by westerns yeah and a very dark western too yeah so in a weird way like superhero films can like probably like take a lot of stuff from other genres of film Mm -hmm. and make its own make it its own thing because it's sort of first and foremost an adaptation of a source material Mm -hmm. and i think as long as the source material as long as people are i think are interested in the source material Mm -hmm. people will go out and watch these films Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I but, but but overall, I think a good five more years. <laughs> <laughs> a good five more years. No, I mean like you're right. Like even comic books themselves. Um, I think the best example I came up with the on top of my head right now is is the Incredible Hulk. Hulk has so many different versions of himself. You either you can and you can like make a a, diff, a different kind of film. You can add, you can do the usual um superhero flick that you know he saves the day, or, or you can do a character study where he where he just sits down and talks to his therapist about all the the fact that all these that he has a multiple personality disorder because in the comics he had, there's so many different versions of the Hulk, Green Hulk, Gray Hulk, um, you know, and each one is sort of a there's more but I'm not gonna go into it because I'm gonna be here for a while. Okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm a Hulk yeah. fan, and but you know each one is sort of a a testament to it to a sort of trauma that he experienced. You know the reason why you know the the first Hulk, the Green Hulk, is so um kind of childish because that's the childhood trauma that he experienced when he was a child um abuse seeing his mother he's seeing her, his mo- mother being killed by her, by her by his father um the abuse that his father gave to him and now and currently in the comics they they're doing a sort of this horror take where he's where every time where it's more like he's gonna find like these gamma radiate monsters and he and they all come in this really grotesque form and it's one of the more popular books that come out of marvel and heck, you can go with um, DC, where they they can do whatever kind of story they feel like. One of their best stories last year was a zombie book, 
holy shit if I saw that movie that would make that into a movie blow my fucking head cause that's and I think you're right yeah, there's so much they can like borrow from because there's they can put themselves with any kind of genre yeah yeah so uh, I think that's uh, definitely I think the sort of like uh the, the silver lining, I guess, of the superhero genre uh, is that it's kind of malleable. You can, like, do whatever you want with it mm-hmm. in, in, in its own way. Like, you can make it be part of, like, a multi-genre sort of thing, which I think a lot of films sort of, like, already do anyway. Because, mm-hmm. like, I think a good example of this would be, say, uh, The Thing or Alien, mm-hmm. where not only is it a sci-fi film, it's a horror film. They're horror films as well, you know? Mm-hmm. So in a, in a way, like, serial films, I think, are able to do that, but, like, I guess to a higher extent. Mm-hmm. Like, they can just pull in so many different things. Yeah, because, like, it's all depending on the writer. Yeah. And it's once you have that acceptance in your head, I think you're able to go through with it. Now... Let me ask you this. Where do you see... Do you see it continuing like the way it is now? Or do they, there's a, there has to be some sort of change in the way they make the movies? Because I've talked to a lot of friends and they say they um, they want something different from Marvel now. And everyone at Marvel films are starting to feel very repetitive. Like they were... Like they said earlier, you know, back in the day, before Phase 3, a lot of them were very repetitive. But now Phase 3, each one was like, oh my god, this is so much different. Like, this is so crazy and stuff you know yeah, yeah, Ragnarok yeah, yeah, was different yeah, from Thor yeah, 2 yeah. and 1 do you think we're end up gonna have end up getting that or do you think that's the only way they can survive say another other 4 years 5 years yeah I think we will get to that point I personally mm-hmm. um, we've already started seeing uh, a lot of like superhero films that sort of critique the genre like Logan and stuff mm-hmm. so I think we will eventually get to that point in the genre cycle mm-hmm. like we I think we're at the precipice soon of mm-hmm. like in order for like you say the Marvel films to be different they'll probably start like sort of like being sort of critical of their own selves and like mm-hmm. sort of trying to break their own sort of uh, tropes and stuff I mean I think to an extent I think Thor Ragnarok sort of you can kind of see that as this as like a trend to that mm-hmm. I guess just because it was just so different from Thor 1 and Thor 2, which were sort of like Shakespearean, I guess, in a weird way. Yeah, and very like, very fantasy. Very high fantasy. And then, like, you know, Ragnarok definitely leans hard on, like, sci-fi and various other things like that. Mm, a lot of um, 80s kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah. And there's, you know, before Scott Derrickson was taken out, he really wanted to make Do- Doctor Strange 2 a horror film. And now we got Sam Raimi, who known for horror as well yeah coming in and it's gonna be interesting where I feel like he'll make it like a light kind of horror you know you know, kind of like Army of Darkness kind of thing which I am not against <laughs> I was literally about to just say like uh, is he uh, yeah, he's gonna either turn it into Evil Dead 1 or it's gonna be Army of Darkness who knows yeah there's a weird transition to it for those three films you got the really dark horror then you got the dark horror comedy and then you got the just the straight up comedy yeah so yeah, no, that's I mean the thing that's the thing about genre, it's always ever changing. But I think you're right in that. I'd like to say the westerns and the musicals, and say the horror moons movies. They don't. They don't adapt. Superheroes, comic books, whatever you want to call it, they adapt. They can adapt to a lot of stuff because we, because it wouldn't be that far fetched from the source material. And I think there's even now I think they're starting to look for like comics that aren't from Marvel and DC. I've heard inklings of a movie for God Country, which is a very fantasy kind of film. Also, kind of a little bit of a western in there too. But you know that's different. But I feel like we're that's the thing about comic movies they know how to integrate other forms of genre into themselves, whereas musicals and westerns they just could. You couldn't have a horror western. I mean, not saying you couldn't, but like, how would that work? Uh, the Red Dead Redemption DLC that has zombies in it. Fair enough. That's video games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess in in fairness, I mean, yeah, I guess because I mean, 
they tried to I remember the Cowboys and Aliens movie and mm-hmm. that did not go well with audiences and it was definitely kind of weird. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I think I, I I guess I agree with you that like not to say that it can't be done, but it probably is hard for like some of those genre films to like you know, tap into like mixing, I mm-hmm. guess. Because now because nowadays superhero movies are sort of mixing with other stuff. You know, we said it before Logan is the best example of that because it's sort of it's very western you if you've seen a western film and I don't mean like John Wayne kind of stuff I mean like Clint Eastwood kind of stuff you see like sort of similarities in how it works with that kind of film yeah and you know I think that's that's about it unless you want to talk about something else involving uh, genre films anything interesting no I think bringing up the uh this sort of genre cycle sort of theory and or rather like idea that and trying to apply it to modern superhero films is you know it's a it's a it's a nice sort of thought experiment mm-hmm. sort of just like wondering like seeing a lot of the previous examples of all these uh, genre films and all and com- and comparing the cycle to what uh you can see in you know this modern day superhero boom mm-hmm now, let me ask you this just before we go what do you think of films that like try to be too different so like Man of Steel and Christopher Reeve Superman um I think uh they probably do have their place um I guess like it feels odd for, I, I don't know I think Man of Steel would maybe fall under the critique possibly mm-hmm. but more of uh just Hey, this isn't your daddy Superman. Look at this cool new Superman kind of thing. Rather than just trying to point out various flaws of, say, the original Superman and, like, either correcting them or highlighting them or saying anything else about it. I think the only thing they sort of did was. If it, it, I think uh, Man of Steel just sort of feels more like a response to, say, like, Superman Returns kind mm-hmm. of, you know, because people thought it was too boring, there wasn't enough action. You know, you have Man of Steel, which is ton of full full of action and stuff like that. Not yeah. to mention they they fall they go full on the Jesus allegory in that one. Yeah, they do. They really do. I mean, just <laughs> there was too many, especially in Batman vs Superman. But you like we haven't. You're right. We I don't think we had that yet. Um, you said just earlier that there hasn't been one that has killed the genre yet. Even the mo- even the worst one. Even the ones that don't do well whether it be from Marvel or DC they still get a sort of um, attention yeah we, we haven't I don't think we've reached the point where we've found a film that will effectively kill the genre like mm-hmm. Batman and Robin did back in the 90s yeah and even then I think what killed that one was just that Schumacher wanted to do a um, kind of an homage to like um, Adam West's Batman to where not that it's bad is just like doesn't seem like adequate at all yeah like there's a lot of things that even even in um source material wise it kind of broke and it didn't and and stuff that people didn't like yeah i guess i can see that bane didn't talk i wanted to see him break someone's back (laughs) that would have been awesome (laughs) no but um yeah i think we're coming uh towards the end of this and you know you you're i think you're right this is a this is an amazing thought experience I mean, I would like to get probably like to hear more people's thoughts on it, but you know, you you who know more about film, um, you say you're not a film guy, but you know, compared to most of the guys, you are the film guy. Yeah, I guess I'll take the title for now. For now, <laughs> and until, until someone else comes in and takes that seat, but no, um, you're right. There's a lot of things that um, that you can see, you can clearly see now. You know, that we're whether we're in the critique or whether we're in the the classical, well, 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 we don't know. It's it's ever changing, especially with comics. But every um, genre goes through this cycle, goes through a similar cycle. Some of them burn out faster. Some of them burn out long, burn out you know f- way further in time. But you know they're still around, and there's still people that sit down and enjoy it every now and then. They come out with a new horror movie that's like, oh, we gotta watch this movie. It's so amazing. Or every other, you know, you get a true grit from the Coen Brothers kind of thing. Yeah. I feel like that's when you know I started really coming back, but you know that's 
that's about it. So, you know, it's coming to the end, guys. Going to wrap it up now. So, yeah, be sh- yeah, guys. So, this is today's episode. You know, be sure to follow us on all the social media platforms from Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Help us get that 100 on Instagram. And yeah, be sure to check us out on all forms of audio podcasts where you can hear this. Whether it be from Spotify to Google Podcasts, CastBox to Apple Podcasts, all that cool stuff. You know, be sure to support us on YouTube, leave a comment, you know, like, subscribe, bell icon, you know how it is. Support us on Patreon. Patreon is where we can get some dough and do some really cool stuff. But, you know, we really need that. <laughs> but, you know, most of the guys really, most of the guys would like to do more stuff, but we kind of need money for it. And yeah, so this has been a fun episode. Um, am I missing anything from my usual like uh, takeaway? Usually, I, I leave Kevin to do it. Mm, I don't think you did. You think I did? All uh-huh. right. So I think that's about it. Um, a little shorter, a tad bit shorter of our, our usual episodes, but you know, it's kind of, it's it's kind of natural when you know it's a very straightforward thing to talk about. But, yeah, you know, yeah. A simple discussion. It's simple discussion, and I think it's also very informative for people who don't know about how genre films tend to work yeah. and seeing how all this kind of stuff kind of leads into it but yeah no it's been your boy Joe and your boy Eli from the Geeks and Turns and we are signing out have a nice one peace <laughs>